dear children in this class we are going to see zorba the greek and i'm going to briefly narrate the story in this video so zorba the greek it's a novel this is nikos kasansakis this novel zorba the greek is about friendship and it was published in the year 1946 it was friendship between two people that is narrator who is our, always known as boss uh, is in the pursuit of god knowledge and narrate narrator versus zorba zorba is in the pursuit of pleasure and happiness so zorba embodied the simple life by working in the mines when he needed money and didn't work when he had money he enjoyed the simple things of life like food wine and music he would turn his food to work and good humor rather than most people who would turn their food into fat and manure so zorba represents the body and the narrator boss represents the intellect together they constitute uh, constituted a harmonized pair so zorba's sensuality balanced the narrator's preoccupation with the things of the head and spirit so i have typed here the narration so that it would be easy for you to follow the story zorba the greek is the first novel of creation author kasansakis and it was published in the year as i said now 1946 in the story chronicles the narrator's friendship with zorba who accompanies the narrator on an extended trip to crete so alexis zorba's this is the name alexis zorba's entrance to the cafe interrupts the narrator's thoughts zorba approaches the narrator and asks to go with him offering to cook for him the narrator finds himself drawn to zorba's boldness and simplicity he agrees and they set off for crete so the narrator seeks true worldly experience by renting out a lignite mine to run in crete he hires hires zorba to be his foreman and entertain him seeing in zorba a man with a kind of connection to the world that the narrator desires the narrator is amused by madam hortens reminiscences he sees the same attachment and sensibility in zorba as zorba ages he grows more passionate not less the narrator is experiencing a sensual dimension of life that is absent from his abstract speculations then as the narrator discovers more about zorba's past he realizes that zorba has had a full life as a lover has been father landlord and beggar Zorba however has never lost his sense of freedom which is untouched by conventional or Christian morality the narrator and zorba meet a beautiful young widow in the town's tavern where she is being harassed by a young men of the town as she often is zorba rescues her from her predicament and the encounter triggers a long dialogue between zorba and the narrator and at next episode is at the mining site zorba works diligently to restore uh, the dilapidated mine often exposing himself to danger as he does so progress of the work is slow and discouraging and this is actually the climax of the novel both the narrator and zorba feel that they have had enough of crete they separate but the narrator continues to hear stories about zorba so he learns that zorba traveled through the balkans leading a life of pleasure with wine women food and dancing finally he settled down in serbia and died there leaving behind a young wife and child so i have given you the brief summary of the novel now let us analyze uh, uh, the novel now okay see this novel zorba the greek is actually a true exploration of life in multiple perspectives uh, Uh, uh through zorba the narrator and the other characters so regardless of the fact whether they are right or wrong but uh, whether how they perceive or how they experience and how uh, live how they live life and the peace they feel with themselves due to their understanding in the domain of their thinking so all these uh, uh, are important in the novel so kasansakis kas uh, kasansakis wants his reader to draw his own conclusions 
about the meaning of life not through the actions and beliefs of zorba alone but rather through a spectrum of beliefs zorba himself explained that he has more to learn of life so zorba uh, like any regular person lives in contradictions and the writer clearly does not want to portray him as a perfect human so the reader of this book should uh, try to go beyond the title uh, little things and uh, get to the wisdom so a tr- truly great book that explores the answers to the big question of what life really is sir, or how you want to live okay how you want to live it so these are the questions the the novel actually poses and uh, here kasan saki wants his readers to explore or to find answers to all these uh, all these uh, big questions sir. and uh, the two characters are present opposing uh, extremes contradictory contradictions of attitude towards life zorba you know if you see earthy uh, sensual natural and spontaneous has uh, nothing to do with books and philosophy so the only book he has read is sindbad the sailor a tale of fantastic adventure of the ancient world uh, for him life is always in the present and he lives as if he uh, he is to die the next moment and uh, he defies the gods so this is how he lives and he will have nothing to do with aestheticism he sees everything in the world as having a soul of its own and he tells the boss the boss is the narrator of the story that uh, the body has a soul it is fed by food and drink and the zorba's notion of soul is not the traditional one as something having you know supernatural origin and one which is perfected through denial of the body uh, he actually mocks such ideas at uh, every turn but uh, if you see on the other side the narrator the narrator is uh, the boss who is in pursuit of abstract knowledge refuses to take part in a, in a life of action or the simple earthly delights of even you know food drink and women instantly instantly takes an interest in um, uh zorba on the first meet and the boss soon begins to depend on him for his new adventure in crete and attempt to bring some action into his uh, uh we can say you know into his uh, contemplative life so the two contrasting aspects of human existence uh, is actually portrayed in this novel uh, as we have already seen the dionysian and apollonian end uh, the death in venice the same theme can be applied to this novel also so the title of the novel refers to zorba as greek so see zorba the greek so uh, zorba as greek this is how uh, the novel projects uh, zorba so the attitude towards so we must see the attitude of greeks so why zorba the greek so what is the what does the writer wants to convey through this title why zorba is portrayed as greek so the attitude toward uh, uh, toward life you know embodied by the narrator and zorba were uh, spawned from the ancient greeks and uh, enshrined in their religious belief in the gods apollo and dionysius respectively so that's why this title so dionysius as we have already seen in death in uh, venice was impetuous and passionate unreflective and irrational and his his uh, passions were expressed in the strong emotions uh, Uh, emotional arts such as music and dance and to the other side if you see dionysius was the god of nature fecund wine celebration so greek drama is said to have originated from the dionysian cults of the ancient civilization so there is little doubt that zorba's uh, spirit is aligned with that uh, of dionysius so the narrator on the other hand represents apollo as uh, you know as in the novel death and venus ashenbag represents both uh, apollo and dionysian here the narrator represents apollo and zorba represents uh, dionysian so rational and reflective passive and restrained apollonian world view is expressed in literature and sculpture in the contemplative arts rather than the active ones so apollo checked the emotions dionysians offered them free reign let us go to the beginning of this um, novel this is the image of zorba so dionysius was the god of fecund nature as i as said apollo was the god of light of form 
so actually niche used this polarity uh, to explain what he saw as being wrong with the late 19th century german and he believed that germans were too apollonian that is too stiff too restrained or we can say too cerebral to create a truly great art and he predicted that the dynasian force would soon erupt if held in check too long and that the result could be devastating so thus niche uh, used mytholo mythological terms to explain why sigmund freud described in psychological terms so that is what sigmund sigmund freud uh, described in psychological terms as we all know repression so the dichotomy or opposite opposition between the body that is the nature of demands of the physical life and spirit which is you no know, intellect or reason has been the obsessive obsessive concern of many modern european writers including thomas mann 